In today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I take with me on a Canadian fishing trip that will hopefully make things go more smoothly for you. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. I am heading to Canada soon, so all of this stuff has been on my mind for a while. In fact, the day this video drops, I will hopefully be fishing for muskies on Eagle Lake. And I have been going over all the stuff that I take with me, and I wanted to make a quick video and share with you some of the things I take with me that you might not think about. So the first piece of equipment that I take with me is an impact wrench. And I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but uh, if you've already got uh, Milwaukee tools, I, I believe DeWalt, I think most of the major manufacturers of tools make something like this. This is the half inch anvil, I believe, Milwaukee. Uh, this will take lug nuts, lug nuts off in a heartbeat. So if you do have the unfortunate circumstance where you blow a tire, whether it's on the trailer or the truck, you can whip this sucker out and be back on the road in no time. So the other thing that I take with me along with this is a small compact floor jack. And I think I picked the one that I'm showing here up for about $35, $40 at Farm and Fleet. These two things have saved my butt at least three or four times. So whatever the cost of just the tool is, like I said, if you've already got the batteries, just buying the tool, it's, it's paid for itself in time alone because if you've got that little floor jack you can jack up the trailer jack up the truck get those lug nuts off get the spare tire back on and be back on the road in no time so speaking of the spare tire because i've had this happen to me before make sure you know how to get at it sometimes it's not as easy as you'd think it'd be i had a 2006 silverado i did not realize that there is a an entire elaborate system <laughs> that holds that tire underneath the carriage of the truck. If you haven't looked into that and you have a truck where it is suspended underneath, sometimes it's not just held on by a couple of lug nuts. Sometimes, like I said, there's an elaborate system that if you don't exercise it once a year, sometimes that sucker will be rusted to the bottom of the truck practically. And I, I had that happen. I literally had to take a hammer to this tire to beat it and get it down from the frame of the truck so that we could put it on and go on our way so it's easy enough to say hey take this stuff but if you can't get at the spare tire <laughs> then it uh, it makes the job a little bit tougher so make sure it is easily accessible you know how to do it take a look at the owner's manual just in case uh, in the unfortunate circumstance where you have to change a tire now to go along with that if you do have a flat tire and it's because of just a nail or a screw or something like that, something you can fix easily. I do also take a patch kit with me so that when you get that tire off, if you can easily patch it, may as well have it for the rest of the trip. That way you don't have to be worried about blowing another tire or having to purchase another tire. And then I also take, this is again, Milwaukee Tools uh, 12 volt. It is a little air compressor. So if you do need to you know if you're out on one of these remote highways say up in canada 502 and you need to get a little bit of air back in the tire you can just put this thing on fire it up and be back on the road in no time this next thing i have never needed but spare prop for the trolling motor when you're fishing lakes that have lots of rocks, like the Canadian Shield Lakes that we find ourselves on a lot of times, whether it's fishing for muskies, walleyes, whatever, um, I always like to have a spare prop just in case something happens to the one that I've got. I don't want something that costs $50 to ruin, you know, for some people, the once in a lifetime trip, once every couple of years. So if you're taking your own boat, just have a spare prop, couldn't hurt. And speaking of spare props, a spare prop for your outboard is good to have as well because here again as long as you don't completely wreck the lower unit if you hit something god forbid if you've if you've got to change the prop having the right little wrench to get that off and then having spare cotter pins so that when you do take that old prop and put the new one off if, if the cotter pin that's holding it on breaks or something this is a cheap little thing to have in the boat with you so spare props all the way around are not a bad thing to have if you're going on a Canadian trip. Now, I am in no way a certified electrician by any stretch of the imagination, but I do know how to use one of these 
in a very simple way. <laughs> so if you run into problems with trailer lights, which that happens to just about everybody, if you run into problems with uh, boat electronics, it's nice to have something like this that you can at least test and see if you're getting power to what you're having problems with. Something else that I bring with is a, like this pair of electrician's pliers, you know, wire strippers and a crimper like that. And then I also bring, it's gonna be hard to see this, but all these little connectors in case I have to rewire something or fix a, a broken wire. So if something does come up and you've just got the stuff sitting around, can't hurt to have it along on the trip uh, again i've saved myself a lot of headaches by having this stuff with me on trips before so just something i want to pass along to everybody another thing that i found handy to have with is if you're going to keep fish whether it's pike walleye bring a vacuum sealer or at the very least have big ziploc bags that you can freeze the fish flat and that is what i'm getting at with this is being able to freeze the fillets flat with a little piece of skin i believe it's a two by two inch piece of skin at least in ontario that you have to have on there if you can do that and you get stopped at a game and fish check point coming back into the states your life is going to be so much easier the couple of times that i've been stopped it's almost immediately as soon as we start taking it out and they see that we are organized and they can see what's happening a lot of times they don't even count they just see that you're that ready for them and they will let you go on through what you absolutely do not want to do is take your fillets put them into a ziploc bag put some water and freeze them all together they will wait until that thaws they they will I've heard horror stories of being stuck at those things for a long time. So even if you don't have a vacuum sealer, even if you can just get those fillets nice and flat, freeze them so that you can easily identify what they are, your life will be so much easier if you get stuck at one of these game checkpoints coming back. All right, obviously having your passport is a must for crossing the border there and back, uh, either a passport book or a card. I do have a separate video that I will link up top here somewhere specifically about crossing the border so i won't go too far into that but uh, if you'd like to watch that after you watch this video i will leave it in the description below and up top here so uh, passports all the way around and another thing i like to do is just get like a little bag like this everybody's passport goes in there so you know where it is uh, you can put just odds and ends like some tape or those pliers that I was showing you, the electrician's pliers, throw them in here so you can keep them in the truck. They're easily accessible. If you wear contacts or glasses and you're driving late at night, early morning, and you want to switch them out, have them in here so you're not digging in the back of your truck for your shaving kit to try to find the stuff. Anything that you think you might need up in the cab of the truck, just find a little, this is just a little Cabela's pack that I've had for years, and I just throw little odds and ends tire gauge, that sort of thing. I have a lot of people ask me if it is worth exchanging US currency for Canadian currency. I typically do not do that. I don't think it's worth it because most places you're gonna be going to up there will accept a credit card. And the good thing about that is that you will get the best exchange rate for that day. Most of the places up there will readily accept US currency, but they are going to get you on the exchange rate. If it's 20 or 25 percent, they'll maybe give you 12 or 15 percent. So using a credit card is way better as far as I'm concerned when you're traveling up there. Unless at the resort that you're staying at, they'd rather have you bring a check or cash, then obviously that's fine. You know, call up there ahead of time, figure that out. But as far as traveling up and back, for the most part, a credit card will work just fine. What you might want to do is call your credit provider and let them know that you're going to be traveling. You know, for me, hey, call them up. I'm going from southern Wisconsin through northern Wisconsin, a little bit of Minnesota up into Canada, just so they know that along the way, if they see charges, they don't see it as possibly fraudulent and they won't shut your car down, which I have had that happen before. Not recently, but it does happen. So if you don't do a lot of traveling, maybe that's not a bad idea to call ahead just to make sure they don't shut you down last but not least make a list this is my you know i'm still a week out from from going on my trip 
I have a list that I've made on Word or Excel, whatever you want to use, and keep it on the computer. And from year to year, you can change things. You can, you know, I've got little notes scribbled on here. It's just to make sure you don't leave something behind that you shouldn't, which I have done before. There was literally one year where I took the net out of the boat and set it off to the side thinking, I will not forget that, and I did. So something as obvious as that, put it on the list before you leave, check it off, make sure you have it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times just having a simple list has saved my butt going on a trip like this. Again, I go twice a year, so I feel like I've got this stuff down pretty well, but it still helps to have a list to go by. If this is a once in a lifetime trip for you or once in every couple of years, make a list so you don't forget something that is gonna screw that experience up for you. So cannot stress how important having a list is. Put the simplest things that you never think you would forget on there, can't hurt, and hopefully that way you will have everything that you need to have a wonderful Canadian fishing experience. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I have for you. Hopefully there's some things I talked about that will be helpful for you. If there's something I missed, and I'm sure there's somebody out there yelling at their computer or phone, or why didn't you put this on the list? Leave that in the comment below so if we do this again next year, I can maybe add it and that way people that are looking at the video might see that comment and go, yes, that is a good idea. So uh, I would appreciate that very much. I am literally going to go upstairs and get the boat ready for Canada because as I said, I am in the midst of getting ready for this trip right now and I am so excited because hopefully that will be some awesome musky content for you guys to watch in the weeks to come. I appreciate every single one of you watching this and I'll see you on the next video.